Hey guys, Zach here, again with another vid. It's been about a week or so since I've done a video. I've been really tied up with Christmas and um, traveling for work. Um, last f Thursday, uh, I was in the airport. I realized that Triple Lot Design, or TAD, was actually going to be doing a drop, product drop. And for those of you guys who don't know, um, Triple Lot Design does product drops just about weekly of restocks and new stuff that they're gonna have on their site and they pretty well sell out normally within minutes um, in some cases for the knives within seconds and um, I realized they were gonna be doing a drop a day early uh, to get um, everything shipped out for Christmas for people so somehow I managed to score this triple out design Dauntless Mark II in G10 um, from my smartphone from an airport, which I usually get a terrible signal um, But I managed to score and I've been trying I've been trying every time they drop These dauntlesses I try and get one um, And this was the first time I've actually been able to to get one purchased a couple days later um, Here it showed up last night and uh, I gotta tell you I th am totally in love with this This might be my favorite knife um, it's easy to say that I, I know it's easy to say that you've got a favorite on a new knife when it just shows up but uh, just everything about this just it just speaks to me um, which is why I've been trying to get one for so long this is actually a production model it's not the serialized model dauntlesses that they um, have put out in the past so um, it's gonna be a user for me for sure I won't feel bad about using using it I think they're gonna actually kick up their production on these next year so they'll become more common and you know you won't feel bad about using a knife that um, right now anyway goes for crazy amounts of money on the secondary market just give you a look at it here so triple lot design dauntless the blade is S30V my particular model is uh, Ranger Green G10 and then a titanium locking side Comes also in black and comes also in a fully titanium model for um, $100 more. At least the handles are full titanium. Um, has a bayonet style grind blade shape. We've got a partial swedge here at the top. Uh, fullers on both sides of the blade. Um, and a forward finger choil here, which is nice. The blade length, um, overall length of the blade is 3.4 inches. Um, the cutting length is just about 2.9, so you don't get a ton of cutting length. But for a little EDC, you don't really you don't really need it. At least I don't really need it. Um, overall length of this thing is um, uh, probably I'm not really sure. I'm really sure. I think the handle is just over 4.6, so you're looking at about eight inches overall length. It's fairly thin. I mean, you get enough enough of the S30V in the blade stock here. If I show it to you, uh, you have a nice, nice aggressive run of jimping across the top here, which I'm a huge fan of. Ambidextrous thumb studs. You can see they're they're uh, milled there, so they're very nice. You get a little bit of jimping here in the 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 um, finger choil here. Your your standard finger choil for your regular grip, your finger dent. The lockup is good. It's about 40%, I would say. And uh, you can't even muscle any side to side or up and down blade play into this, at least on mine. Uh, let's take a look here. Centering is good, good centering. Nice fluted uh, G10 scale here. The G10 is actually smooth, so it's not, not textured at all. It's not a peel ply type, um, which for me is perfect. Um, for carry for everyday carry. Um, I don't really need any more aggressive G10 when I have a nice indent or finger choil here and then a nice run of jimping. I don't need any any uh, aggressive sides for for my EDC uses anyway. And a deep carry pocket clip which I know some of you guys are not a fan of. I personally um, I really like that. I like having um, a more of a concealed look for my uh, for my EDC G10. I think it's G10 anyway. Backspacer. It's got some jimping or some grooves milled in it to give you a little bit of traction. Sticks up just a little bit there. 
stainless steel hardware so you have a stainless steel pivot screw and then two other screws here and then as well as a standoff here in the back for a lanyard which is uh, is a nice touch for me um, I like it better when a lanyard is set up this way to go on this way rather than be pushed through um, a sleeve on the knife it just it just it just keeps it you know much more clean just much more sanitary and a clean look um, overall so you do have that uh, option if you like to carry a lanyard. Uh, the titanium side, the clip, and the blade are all bead blasted, which if um, I was going to have any kind of bitches or criticisms on this, I would say that uh, I'm not the hugest fan of bead blasting just because it scuffs up. You know, you guys with your Sebenzas and, and other titanium uh, knives, I, I like stone wash on titanium because the scuffs just show up on this bead blast or sand blasting very quickly it seems. Um, you can see right there on where the pocket clip moves a little bit there's already a scratch starting and I've got a little scuff here and this is just after carrying it around last night. I got a little, little scuff here on the titanium handle side and then also let's see where is it right there if I can get it to I got a couple of scratches already or scuffs uh, on the blade I mean, it's going to be a user, so that's going to happen, but, you know, when you spend a few hundred, two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars on a knife, um, you know, I, I, at least I, I tend to baby it a little bit, at least for a few weeks, <laughs> for, uh, before it gets scuffed up. Um, so that's, that's just a real minor criticism. A different finish, I think, would have been sweet to, uh, to help hide that wear a little bit. Um, ergonomics, for me, are just perfect. I mean, I said that it's probably my favorite knife. Um, I see it being in my top three knives that I own, definitely in the top three. Uh, the ergonomics for me are perfect, absolutely perfect. Um, no hot spots at all, it just fits perfect in my hand. I love the jimping, I love the Ford finger choil for choking up on it. I love the blade shape, you know, I love everything about it. Just This is just one of those ones that speaks to me. Um, not the not going to be the greatest slicer, of course. Um, it is flat ground about halfway up in this this style, this bayonet style. Um, you know, it's not going to be as good, I wouldn't imagine, of a slicer as you know, say, a very thin hollow ground or a full flat ground blade. But for what I do and what I do in my EDC tasks, it's not an issue at all. Um, so I, you know, that doesn't bother me. I actually really enjoy how this blade looks. Very, very, very impressed with this. Um, one other kind of minor criticism, you know, we'll see how, how it wears in over time, is there isn't a, uh, a lock bar stabilizer or a lock over travel stop on the, on the titanium side. And uh, the lock bar being so thin, you could see I, I can actually muscle it a little bit past. Well, with not, not really too much force, I could push it past uh, where it should be here. The, the pocket clip helps a little bit to prevent it from being pushed past, but, uh, you know, it's, it, it'll push past pretty easily um, if, you know, if you're not paying attention. So that's something to keep in mind if you pick one of these up. I don't know how that's going to, you know, how it's going to affect it. I haven't had, personally, I haven't had an issue with, um, with you know, overextending lock bars on any of my other knives, but um, we'll see. We'll see. This one isn't the most rigid as far as, you know, pressure it takes to, to move it which is actually very nice when you're closing it you know it's really easy to disengage no lock stick at all if I had to guess without having taken it apart I would guess that it is carbonized just based on how easy it is to uh, disengage and um, there is just a little hint that it might be if it probably ain't gonna show up on camera here but it looks like it is actually carbonized um, don't quote me on that though. I am totally not sure. So, don't post in the comments that I'm an idiot or <laughs> anything else. Even though I might be an idiot. Um, pretty smooth. Pretty smooth um, knife. It rides on. If I can get it to the camera here, let's see if I can get it up here. You can see them in there. Rides on the bronze washers. So no bearing system or anything like that. Still flicks open pretty easily now that it's uh, starting to break in. You can flick it open without much problem. 
uh, very very nice I think it comes in at just over four ounces so it's a light EDC um, rides in my pocket like a dream um, again love everything loving everything about this this little blade so we'll just see how you know how it wears in over time and just before I go here just a quick comparison because I don't know what, what it is with me but I, I always think that some of these are going to be bigger you know when I get them than they actually end up being at least how they feel here here we are with the um nooms on so um nooms on has just a little bit more blade and uh, handle the handle on the dauntless is close it's a little bit shorter um, and tapered off there in the back so you see my my whole grip you get a full grip on this no problem very 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 good ergonomics for my hand Here's a CQC7. You see that it actually is very similar in size to the CQC7. The handle is almost identical size to the CQC7. Um, very close in width, the CQC7 being just a little bit wider, and very close in overall blade length. So if you're really curious, to you know the overall size of this thing and you, you're an Emerson fan you have one of the CQC 7s or maybe a 6 I'd say it'd be even closer to a CQC 6 um, what you're looking for what you're gonna get with this uh, little Dauntless it's just perfect it's just perfect um, uh, what I like uh, what I like a more exotic newer hard use blade steel sure sure I would um, but S30V is plenty good for what I'm going to use this this knife for 300 bucks. Um, of course, I, I, I'm I'm one of those people that will always up pay for the the latest and greatest and newest thing. But the S30V is going to be more than adequate. I don't have an issue with any of the other knives I have with S30V. Um, holding an edge, taking an edge. You know, paramilitary for a good example there. Um, I don't have any issues with the with S30V. Just another comparison to a pair of two. A little bit smaller overall. Just rides in the pocket great. Again, deep carry pocket clip before I go here. That is cool to me. I like deep carry pocket clips. So that I know there's a lot of you guys out there that like a, a big hunk of your knife sticking out of the top of your pants. You probably won't dig this clip if you're like that. And then the last and final mini criticism is that this clip you can see it's not very it's it's pushed down here just a little bit which is great if you don't want to you know you want to keep that nice and tight against your pants and and not scratch up your car or anything else but it needs to be upturned just a little bit more um, there's not enough room here to easily slide it into your pants I have to almost hold it the clip out just a little bit to uh, to easily slide this thing back into my pants pocket so I'll probably take this clip off and and bend this just ever so slightly up so that I can get it in and out of my pants a little easier. The knife, the knife. <laughs> perverts, perverts. But there you go. Just a little beauty. If you get a chance to score one of these or if Tad ramps up their production and they're more readily available, I would say do it. If you're if you're on the fence, I would say do it. It is it is very awesome. Um, easily, easily top three. Top three for me. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoy. Leave comments below, and thanks for watching. See you later.